tonight I want to have a chat with you about um, one, of, one of the things that you notice is motivation. A lot of people depend more on motivation because of the circumstances they go through. So I just want to give you a, a biblical perspective of what can help you to focus so that you're not dependent on the motivation of the world, but that you can do and achieve with joy the instructions of the Lord. So, okay. So, to start off, let's take, for instance, if you take a glass of water for Paris that comes from a tap, who of you are willing to drink that water? Nobody. Why? <laughs> because it's dirty, it's poisonous. But that's the same thing. In our spirit, when we drink of a fountain that is not pure, we poison our bodies. We poison our soul. Because we are not designed to drink from dirty springs. I don't think even in, in Jesus' time there were any dirty springs. I think the water were all good and clean at that time. Uh, not like in the world that we live today. But anyway, so... A lot of times when you see that you do not feel well, your focus is not good, your joy gets stolen easily, it means there's a problem. And the problem is never with God. A lot of times it's easy for us to blame God and to say, but Father, I'm your son, don't you love me? In your word you say you're a good father, you want to give me the good things. Uh, Jesus came to give life and life in abundance. And then you can feel like your God has neglected you or that there's something wrong. Now, I don't believe God has unfavorite children. I believe God loves us all. It's just what we do with God's love makes a difference. Now, if you've got kids in your house, you will definitely know not all kids are the same. They are different. And I think God knows that as well, that not everybody of us is the same. You cannot work with all of your kids 100% the same way. Not everybody is designed the same way. So how are we going to go about, uh, let's say if you've got a challenge that you feel, sure, life is getting tougher. That's one of the complaints that I feel, but that's something that I hear every day, that life gets tougher. I think life has always been tough. I don't think it's getting tougher I just think our focus is more on the problem than on the solution. And because our focus is on the problem, we cannot draw and we don't ask and receive instructions from the Lord to help us with the challenges we are facing. Um, Google is a, is a very good tool. But it doesn't mean it's godly. You can get advice that helps you. Uh, there's a lot of quotes that has got other religions connected to it it's not godly but still a lot of people depend more and more on external motivation because we feel life is getting tougher so what do we do when life gets tough well we need to go to God first and we need to acknowledge God as our source because when you do that it's basically the same as you say I plug this fan into this power source. If I just let the plug lay on the ground, the fan is not going to work because it's not connected. So you need to make a declaration, an activation to say, Father, I connect myself to you so that your spirit can know and focus on God. A lot of times it's the small things that we do that makes a big difference in our life. So now I connect myself to God as my source meaning he's my fountain of life there's a lot of scriptures in the bible that says that um, jesus is our fountain uh, we can draw uh, with joy from the fountain of salvation uh, which means that again god is our source he's our provider he's the one looking out for us but one thing that i want you to remember is let's take for instance a muscle if you just wake up in a cold winter's morning and you pick up something heavy, the chances of injuring your muscles are very good. 
But that's the same in life. We go through circumstances where I believe God allows us to go through circumstances which is not easy so that we can get that exercise. God will never allow us to be attempted above our abilities. So when we get an instruction from God, we know it's within our reach. And a lot of times I think God thinks more of me than I think of myself. Because some of the instructions is like, Lord, I don't know how you think I'm going to do this. But every time that I've been obedient, I've been able to achieve what the Lord has given me. So, let's take a, another picture. If you want to exercise and build muscle, are you going to take the 1 kilogram or the 10 kilogram? If you take the light weight, you will build muscle, but very slow. When you take the heavier weight, you will build muscle a lot faster. But it's not comfortable. It's not easy. But yet, when we go through circumstances in life, if we've got a decision, we will choose the easy way out. That's a human aspect. We will go for the easiest way out. Now, but why will God allow us to go through difficult circumstances? Well, God has called you for a purpose. And a lot of times, and I would go as far as to say every time, our purpose are much higher than we believe what is possible. So God sees this end picture. He says, this is what I want you to do. And you're like, yeah, and you say, you know, I'm not so sure. Lord, I, I don't think I'm able to do that. And the Lord says, okay, let me give you some circumstances that will increase your ability to this. And then when you look back, there's a saying that says hindsight vision is 20-20 vision. means perfect vision. Because when you look in the past, you can see, wow, I'm still here. How many times did you think, well, I'm not going to make it? Many times. Because we focus on our surroundings. We focus on the problems. And that's the challenge. If you drink from a fountain that is contaminated... Facebook can be used for good, but it can be used for bad as well. Google, all of those things. It can be used for good, but it can be for bad as well. And a lot of people, when they go through difficult circumstances, they tend to turn to social media. And then, as it's planned, you read something positive, and then later stage, you read all the negative stuff. And you wonder, why am I focused so negative? Well, it's because you're not focused on what God has given you to do. I don't say it's right or wrong to spend time on social media. You can use it for the good, but so can it be bad. You need to discern the source. As all of us know, we do not drink the tap water from Paris. So you need to know what is a good and a godly source. The more, sp more time you spend reading the Word of God, the more you will be able to identify the, what is a good source for you. And in most times, when you read your Bible and you get revelation from God, I, just, I don't just mean you read your Bible to tick your box and say, okay, I've read my Bible today. I'm still saved. No. When you get revelation from God, that revelation will always be connected to your circumstances. And the Wisdom that comes from God exceeds everything here on earth. So if you are focused and you say, Lord, I want to read till I get my revelation. Because I need a breakthrough. I need my focus to change. The Lord will do it. Some days it takes a lot of reading. Some days it doesn't. But when you say, Lord, I want to hear from you. God will speak. It's just we need to tune our ears to listen to when God speaks. Because a lot of time God speaks, but He doesn't say what we want to hear. But the thing is, how many times does a shortcut not seem like the better option? I was so penalized in school because I always looked for the shortcuts, especially in math. I had the ability to find every shortcut. 
But I was penalized because they said that's not how you're supposed to do it. But that's what were, who, that's who I were. I want, always wanted the quickest, easiest solution to a problem. It didn't matter if it was right or wrong. But that's the thing. In, if you want to be good in something like math, you don't focus on shortcuts. You focus on, I need to be able to do this complete. And that's the same in life. When we've got a goal, and we pray and we say, Lord, I want a goal because I want something to focus on. A lot of people are wandering through life aimlessly. They just want to get today past to go to tomorrow. Because we forgot that we have goals in life. What is our goals? Well, you need to pray and ask God, Lord, what is my purpose? Because your goal will be connected to your purpose. So that when you have set your goals, your goals will advance you. It will help you. It will keep you focused on what is your purpose in life. So if you feel like, I'm not sure what the Lord wants me to do. You can also have a look and you will see there's no clear goals in your life. If there's no clear goals in your life, it's easy to get distracted. Because you will always go after things that look right. Oh, today this is the thing that I need to do. Tomorrow, oh, oh, that's the thing that I need to do. But what do you achieve? And that's what we must also focus on, is to have a godly goal and focus on that goal because that goal will help us. It is the same as if I say, I want to build muscle. If you go to a gym instructor, he will ask you, okay, how many? You want to be a bodybuilder or you just want your clothes to fit properly? Because it's not the same route. So you need to be able to assess your situation and say, well, Lord, help me. I want to set goals, especially we're going into 2024. A lot of people are thinking about their goals and they realize they didn't reach half of their goals. Is it not the same over and over in January we make new goals and in December we just relax because we don't want to focus on what we didn't achieve this year? But it, it's not supposed to be like that. God wants us to live an abundant life. Because in John 10 verse 10 he said, The thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. And I have come so that you can have life and have life in abundance. But we don't always have that life in abundance because our focus is not on God and the goals that God has got for our lives. So I want to encourage everybody of you. Um, some people are going to work straight through. Some people are going to go on holiday. But as an everyday instruction, focus on what is the goal. What do I need to achieve today? If you don't have something, pray and ask, Lord, I need goals. I need direction in my life. And then the Lord will start to give you instructions. In the beginning, if you feel like I am not up to this instructions, try your best. Because the instruction is more than you can handle. But it allows you to grow into that instruction. In order for you, to become the person God wants you to become. God doesn't want us to have a defeated mentality. He says, I've given you the victory. Jesus is, has overcome. And when we are connected to Jesus, we are partakers of that victory. But in most of our lives, we don't feel victorious. We just... Yo, I still remember when I was in school. I just prayed and said, please, Lord, let the rapture be soon. <laughs> because I felt life was too challenging. But that's the thing. When life starts to become challenging, change your focus from the problem and say, Lord, what is the ability that I need to achieve? Because God supplies in all of our needs according to His riches. But our needs doesn't mean it's easy and always nice. 
Sometimes God supplies our circumstances so that we can become who God needs us to become. And again, I will end with this. If you feel your instructions are above your abilities, that is good. Because that will enable you to work to a point. Don't quit and say, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to achieve it. If you ask somebody that wants to become an athlete and train for the Comrades Marathon, he's not going to start with 90 kilometers a day. He's going to start little and he's going to work his way up. And I believe that is what we need to do because we're in a marathon as well. Try your best and ask God to do his part. So I hope this blessed you. I hope that you are connected to the right source. And something that helps a lot is if you stand in a mirror and speak declarations over your body. Because when you see yourself saying something, your brain remembers it a lot clearer. It's something that, I am, that I'm practicing. And I'm amazed at the difference that it does when you make a declaration and you say, I look in the mirror and I say, this is my declaration. And I get my declarations based on scripture, not on what Google says. And that helped my, it gave me a lot of ability just to feel like I'm coping, but not just coping, that I actually feel excited for tomorrow. Not that when you wake up, it's like, oh, it's another day. And, and night when you go to bed, you're like, yes, I made it. Well, the goal is not to make it up until the night time. The goal is to have an abundant life. Father, I come tonight and I pray for everybody that is here tonight, Lord. The ones that are focused and motivated, but also the ones that are not focused, but distracted and unmotivated and discouraged. I pray for everybody that you will give us the ability, that you will give us the direction, that you will give us the tools that we need in order to have a godly life. That people will see that we've got something in us that they need. Not that it's like, shame, that poor person. We don't want to live a defeated life. We want to live a victorious life, focused on you. That we want to do what you ask us to do, Lord. That we'll have the energy, the drive to accomplish what you ask us to accomplish. But that we will enjoy what we do with you. And not just feel like life is too hard. Please come and take us away, Lord. I pray for a mentality that we will be strong and courageous. That we will look the circumstances in the eyes and that we will declare that if God is for me, who can be against me? And that we'll, even if we stumble and fall, that we will get back up, dust ourselves off and that we'll try again because your grace is sufficient. And I pray, Father, that you'll bless everybody that is here tonight, that they will have a wonderful blessed life and life in abundance in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jan. Awesome. All right, so we still got five minutes. So I want us to stand up, please. And then I want us to two, two, stand together. If you, if you by yourself, find a friend. And stand by a friend, please. I want us to be in groups of two. All right. Here comes Kimi. All right. So we're going to practice a little bit. All right. So I want you to look at the person next to you and, and tell them, you are victorious. Okay. Tell them, you are more than an overcomer through Christ. All right, so the one say first, then the other one say first. So you must learn to listen and to hear. So each one say and the other one say. Look in the eyes while you say. 
Okay. You, you are more than an overcomer through Christ. Okay. Okay. So let's do a healing one. Say, you, uh, through the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Okay. So you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All right, you uh, are a well that brings forth good water. All right, you are always joyful, you wear a crown of joy. All right, you carry on you a mantle of wisdom. You make wise decisions. You are wise with money and generous. <laughs> you are always full of the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, full of love, joy and peace. I, you are a child of God and I love you very much <laughs> hey guys so I know it's tough to look at someone else in the eyes but Jan says we must look in a mirror <laughs> I, yeah, no, sometimes you just look in a mirror and just say hey you are a winner you can do it you know yeah, awesome.